At the foot of the hill, San Giovanni, surrounded by underwater spring gardens on one side and the river Skurder on the other, lies this beautiful town. And today, I invite you to take a walk around this charming place. Welcome to KOTOR, Montenegro. Churches, bell towers, medieval squares, and the smell of wild oranges filling the serpentine streets, these are some of the things that make up Kotor. Now we're going to visit one of the most important religious places in Kotor. The entrance was free in low season, but you may have to pay in summer. The Kotor Cathedral of St. Trifon is one of the town's top attractions. It dates back to 1166. It also houses the relics of St. Trifon, Kotor's patron saint and protector. Even though Montenegro is 90% orthodox, of all the churches in KOTOR, the Catholic St. Trifon Cathedral is possibly the most stunning. It features two bell towers and a mix of architectural styles. It's worth going up the stairs and appreciate the view that opens from up above onto the square below. The serpentine streets of KOTOR Old Town are arguably the most photogenic and fascinating attractions in Montenegro. KOTOR is a UNESCO World Heritage Site that you must add to your bucket list. Walking the cobbled streets and narrow alleyways rushes you through KOTOR's 2,000-year history. You might think you're in a parallel world, far from reality, and yet it's a reality for some people, as locals still live here. Numerous cafes and restaurants make the city buzz, giving it that special feeling that life can be enjoyed. I'll get back to the restaurants in a bit in more detail. Meanwhile, just enjoy this enchanting walk.
KOTOR is a cat's town. Cats can be seen anywhere and it's popular to buy a cat souvenir. Here you can appreciate a clothesline full of bright pink. Did someone throw a pink t-shirt in the washing machine? Or is it a Barbie's house? Let me know what you think. As I mentioned before, KOTOR is a town of cats. They can be found anywhere and they are respected and taken care of. People often feed them and play with them. Look at this tiny little kitty. There is a food dispenser at one of the squares and theoretically you can buy food to feed the cats. However, we couldn't figure out how it worked, so we just bought some treats for the cats at the supermarket. And I think you should do too, they'll appreciate it. As promised, I'll go ahead and share my thoughts about the restaurants in Old Town. Unfortunately, our experience wasn't great. We tried having lunch and dinner there a couple times and it felt like a tourist trap, as it often happens in those popular, busy areas. But we did find some amazing places to eat outside the Old Town. If you live to eat and not eat to live, you'd definitely be better off finding a restaurant a bit further away. Funny enough, in Old Town we did find some nice cafes to have a tea or a coffee accompanied by a dessert, and they were pretty good. 
Of course, it's only our personal experience. And if you think we missed something, please let me know in the comments because I love eating and I might be back to Kotor. Thanks for taking a walk with me around this fascinating place. I hope you liked it. If you haven't been there before, would you like to? And if you have, how did you like it? What was your favorite part? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you in my next video. Take care.